I did the AC301 this morning, the Azure Architect exam, and I passed it. So we just had friends over, um, but I figured before I go to bed, let me share with you my experience before I forget it. So uh, pardon the low audio quality, but I'll just give this a shot. So I did all the labs on Linux Academy. I took a few of the WizLabs Labs uh, practice exams, and then based on the questions I got wrong on the WizLabs Labs exams, I did a Microsoft.com slash learn modules on the services that I had the most trouble with. And then I made a flashcard set on Quizlet uh, for learning which Azure services correspond to which AWS services, because I, at this point, I'm more familiar with AWS, and knowing those um, similarities really helps. And there's actually a page uh, that Microsoft made uh, that has those side by side, which is what I used to make the flashcards. And then I also studied the Linux Academy flashcards, which I've done for all exams. And I also listened to the lectures on Linux Academy and also the two top courses on Udemy, the ones by uh, Nick Collier and Scott Duffy. And uh, those lectures, mostly I was just listening while I was like cleaning and doing things like that um, because I wanted to make my time at the desk more focused on hands-on practice. And then, I took the exam from home. It was my first online proctored exam for Microsoft. It was a bit disconcerting for six minutes. I was just told to wait there for a proctor and I, I thought the screen had frozen, but the proctor did eventually show up um, and, and it was a good experience. Uh, be careful, they have a set of questions where you just give a short answer, but then you can't um, go back to that for a second uh, look. Um, they point out which series of questions are like that, um, but when you're taking practice exams, um, you can't, um, most platforms don't, don't simulate that experience. So for those questions where you get a question and then you give an answer and then um, you go on to the next one and it's the exact same question but with a different set of answers, um, if you've taken a practice exam, I think you know which type I mean. Uh, for those with the real exam, you can't go back to the previous one. Um, so then um, finally, the last thing I did was uh, I wrote down questions I had about Azure services based on the questions I got wrong on the practice exams, and then I tried to answer them. So um, in the last few minutes of this video, um, I'll just give you a few examples of those questions and answers that I made for myself. So for example, um, what is the difference, uh, what is Azure Migrate? It's a service where, that lets you migrate servers, databases, and data. And uh, you can do it from where to where, from data centers to Azure, and from other public clouds, even AWS to Azure. And it seems like both Azure Site Recovery and Azure Migrate do the same thing. So why use one or the other? Well, Site Recovery's main focus is on recovering in a disaster, and Migrate is more for getting it from one place to another. However, in the past, uh, until mid-2019, you could only use Migrate for assessing a migration, but not actually doing it. But since mid 2019, you can even do the migration with Azure Migrate. And there are two types of uh, migrations you can do with Azure Migrate, an agentless and an agent-based migration. And the agent-based migration actually uses the uh, site recovery replication engine under the hood. And then, um, what is the name of the agent used by Azure Site Recovery? And that's called the mobility agent. So that tripped me up on um, one of the practice exams. Um, the mobility agent, okay, that, that sounds um, like something related to transportation to me, but 
It's actually uh, for the replication agent on Azure Site Recovery. I guess it makes your data, data and your servers mobile. Um, and then what's the, um, what are the equivalents in AWS for Azure Migrate? Uh, well, I went to the AWS console and I went to the Azure console and you know where you can do a search of services. I did that in both for the word migrate and clicked enter. And for AWS, what popped up was interestingly enough, their newer service AWS IQ, which is for finding experts in AWS. So I guess that's the top recommendation for doing a migration by AWS uh, based on that. And then um, the experience I had on Azure doing a search for the word migrate was Azure Migrate. And um, let's see. And then what happened when I did the same thing um, oh, by just going to the list of services, uh, comparing the list of migrate services on AWS and the ones on Azure. And uh, the top of the list on AWS was the uh, migration hub and uh, when I saw that it looked very similar to um, the Azure migrate service because it included different types of migration and the different phases of migration from assessment to implementation um, so doing those comparisons uh, you know coming from AWS uh, really helped me wrap my mind around Azure migrate and also the differences to site recovery so um, then another question I had was log analytics is for logs, right? Um, not for metrics, wrong. Um, actually log analytics can also work for uh, metrics. So, so that tripped me up. Um, it's, um, it's more of a separate service than it is in AWS. Like on AWS, you have CloudWatch which has a bunch of stuff in it, including uh, CloudWatch Logs and CloudWatch Logs Insights. However, on uh, Azure, you have Log, um, what's it called? You have Log Analytics, and you can collect logs from on-premise, um, you can collect it even from AWS and aggregate it there and query it, kind of like you can query in uh, CloudWatch Log Insights. However, there's also a bunch of other stuff. Um, for example, let's see, it can um, provide a service map down to the process level on your Windows or Linux VMs. Um, that reminded me of AWS X-Ray in terms of the map, but AWS X-Ray is only between uh, services, like between Lambdas or other compute services uh, for tracing, but um, service map inside of uh, Azure Log Analytics also lets you uh, see it, uh, the dependency map um, on a, down to a process level, and that's what service map does. Um, so there are all these little um, additional treasures inside of Azure Log Analytics. It, it's a, a whole service unto itself, um, unlike CloudWatch Log and CloudWatch Log Insights on AWS. Um, so what about um, Azure Monitor Logs? So that was really confusing to me. There's Azure Log Analytics and there's Azure Monitor Logs. So it turns out they're the same thing. It's just Azure Monitor Logs are the logs from Azure Log Analytics showing up on Azure Monitor, so you can see them in both places. Uh, another question I had was, can VNet peering happen across regions? Yes. Can VNet peering happen across different subscriptions? Yes. Can VNet peering happen between classic deployments and uh, resource manager deployments? Yes. So. And similarly to AWS, transitive peering, uh, where you uh, route from A to B to C doesn't work. Um, 
Then another question I had was, um, what, well, another thing that I really had to pay attention to were the different SKUs. They seem to put a little bit more emphasis on knowing the different plans and SKUs uh, than on AWS uh, exams, like um, knowing uh, the different um, app service uh, plans, the basic, free, shared, premier, all those things. Um, they put a bit more emphasis on that for the various services. So studying up on that helped me a little bit. Okay, that's all. Um, sorry again for the low audio quality, but I figured better than nothing, and I hope this helps.